extravaganza, beyond all extravaganzas. We'll be grappling up prizes all the way till 5 p.m. tonight. We're talking 140, 150 million dollars. Did I know it was going to be expensive? Yes, I did. It's flashing. It's saying, look how much we have. This is not about education. It's not about students. It's not about serving the community. It's about money. Welcome to Around the World. Oh my goodness, we should have served alcohol. An event honoring the culture of students from Highlands Community Charter and Technical Schools. We have students from over 90 nations that speak over 50 languages. Sacramento is home to a diverse population of immigrants. As an adult charter school, Highlands recruited them, mushrooming to an enrollment of nearly 15,000, making Highlands larger than half of California State Universities. The teacher, the classmen, all, all school is, is nice. It's a great opportunity for migrants. With each student, Highlands wins more government money. We have a winner. Big events bring big attendance. Our absentee rate has gone like 50% lower by doing these inclusive events. And attendance brings more money. Attendance is really important for us for funding. But I would say this, if you're not at school, you're not learning. And so we emphasize getting people to school. We spend a ton of money on that. A ton of money that over 30 past and present Highlands employees told us they're concerned about. Do you think to yourself, you know, is this legal? Every day, especially with the money that we seem to have endless supplies of. Highlands Charter School is a public school, meaning your tax dollars pay for it and its events, like around the world. How much did this cost? If I had to guess, probably around twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. Yet records show that Highlands paid thirty-eight thousand dollars to a balloon company for decorating services alone. It's taxpayer dollars with very little oversight. Just five weeks prior to the event, Highlands leadership sent staff to San Diego for professional development. If you've never been to the Hyatt Manchester in San Diego, it's, I don't know, one of the two or three best hotels in California, arguably one of the best locations on the water. The mandatory trip for over 500 Highlands employees included flights to San Diego and a three-night waterfront hotel stay. We picked a premium place. I think we have premium staff. The cost, around $2 million, board minutes show. We went to San Diego, um, not because there was some event or conference there, it's because Doc had an idea. Doc looks over and says, the mad scientist that he is, he says, why don't we have a staff professional development in San Diego? I would love to hear from taxpayers, see what they think about that kind of idea. Thank you. This time we're coming back again! professional development trips were at Lake Tahoe. It was picturesque, honestly. Highlands gets millions in government grants for professional learning. I always try to spend it as, as quickly as you can. I'm spending money. Sometimes the state decides, gee, they didn't spend it. Exactly. Even we don't want to give it back, so we want to no. have a plan and spend it. But staffers say the trips felt more like vacations. There's nothing in my mind that stands out as helpful in terms of my professional development. Unnecessary, utterly unnecessary trip. It was a party to celebrate Highlands. Recordings of staff meetings provided to ABC 10 by our sources show schools leaders echoing this sentiment. It's gonna be probably more fun than professional development. I can think of no better place to relax and see beautiful scenery, access to restaurants. That's something. This is why we're going to San Diego. To enjoy yourself, you've earned it. I mean, I think to someone watching this, I mean, to someone watching this, it sounds like a vacation. I, I just disagree. They went through intensive training, legal training, uh, sexual harassment training. So you stand behind $2 million. 100%. And if people enjoyed themselves, 
I think that's part of learning. In addition to a trip for his staff, Doc Smith told us he wanted to go to San Diego to get more enrollment for Highlands. He says he had an idea to recruit employees of the hotel they stayed at as new students. I think it's genius, and I think the taxpayers are going to be excited about the results. The school's executives and board members have also traveled to places like Maui, Pebble Beach, and France. Those are pretty expensive destinations. How do you justify going to those places as a business expense with public school funds? We have to do it because we have to survive. Those places aren't vacations. That's where our politicians are going, and we have to go to say, look at Black Caucus. Look at Latin Caucus, uh, Mr. McCarty. In short, he said these trips were needed to lobby for his school. You have to go there to get the word out. To, it's just not a bunch of throwaways. We reviewed two years of Highland's expenses and found they spent over $3 million on travel, including over $335,000 per diem, nearly $300,000 in airfare, and nearly $1 million on hotels in places like Vegas, New York, Texas, Napa, Nashville, and New Orleans. If we don't attend those things and make our point to those people, and that just happens to where these meetings are, like at Pebble Beach. Records show Highland's board president traveled there for golf at the Governor's Cup tournament and that the school paid the organization 80 grand. <laughs> Trips are not the only nice things Highland's paid for. The school bought new Google Pixel flip phones, which retail for more than $1,000 for its employees. And we pay for all the service, the, the, the texting, the internet, the hotspot and uh, voice. You can't even get that plan. You can't buy that plan. Every student also gets a Google Pixel phone and service plan. I'm buying 19,000 of them. This flyer shows Highlands used the phones as an incentive to boost attendance. The site with the most attendance would get their free phones first. What do you think of Highlands? Nice call, very yes. nice call. Learn English and yes. get a free phone. <laughs> And then there's the bonuses. At this publicly funded school, employees got $20,000 each in 2023. People were mad at me for giving the same amount of bonus to the janitor that I did to a teacher. I don't know why. That's over $10 million in bonuses for their 500 plus employees. Do I need that money? Yes. Does it feel good? No. It feels, it feels gross to me to accept that money when our school districts are struggling so much. Highlands has paid big bonuses for multiple years. That's extravagant compared to other public it's schools. It's prudent and shrewd. He said other public schools are wasting money. We're wasting nothing. Between the salaries and bonuses at Highlands, the pay for these public school jobs is incredible. We call it the golden handcuffs at Highlands. So a lot of people, they turn a blind eye and you don't speak up when you hear and say and uh, see certain things. We found full-time Highlands teachers' pay and benefits averages to over $107,000. That's not including the annual bonus. Highlands pays everybody very good money. But the highest paid employees are those at the top. The 15 principals average over $160,000. Yet just one out of the 15 have an administrative credential. This credential and a master's degree are required for principals at non-charter public schools. Working with our sources in the school's organizational chart, we made a list of the school's top leaders. In pay and benefits, those 18 people make an average salary of $223,800. Only 10 have at least a bachelor's degree, records show, and only three have leadership experience at an accredited education institution outside of Highlands. Are you familiar with the term non sequitur? Mm -hmm. It means irrelevant. Critics say charter schools' lax laws allow Smith to hire and promote people who serve his best interest rather than the schools. Several conversations and meetings they prefer to hire people without degrees, people who are not in education, and that was done purposely so that they would follow the Highlands way. 
the California Charter School Association says charters offer more flexibility, creativity, a different approach to public education. They invented charter schools to do things that were creative, out of the norm, Without Charter's more flexible hiring model, Doc says he wouldn't have a diverse leadership team. Because there's not the people in the pipeline to do it. So, because so, they don't have the they're working on it now, but they can do the job. Between salary and benefits, Doc himself makes over $348,000. Compensation similar to several district superintendents in Sacramento County. It's very clear he, he does not understand anything having to do with education. Doc Smith does not have a bachelor's degree. He has no teaching credential, no administrative credential, and he spent his career not in education, but as a parole officer. Smith retired after 29 years at the California Department of Corrections. So you're a teacher, huh? Even so, he got the job running Highlands Charter School, making him one of the top paid public school administrators in the region. And this former police officer with no education or training gets to make almost as much and control perhaps larger budget. It's very troubling to me. What qualifications do you have to be the executive director of Highlands? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I took this job after I retired, I was on the board as a part-time position because we were bankrupt. Now we're one of the most successful schools in the country. I love this school. Um, I love who we serve. I think that qualifies me. Three former members of Highland's leadership team told us Highland's also has employees with titles like special projects coordinators and consultants. They wanted to make connections in the community, and this way people were hired on it, but it was buried down in the books. They wanted to stay politically connected. And we have a lot of people on staff who we've never met, we don't know what they do. We don't, we don't employ, we don't have any consultants. We just don't have anybody on contract like that. We found that's not true. In Highland's contract with their vendors, they've paid seven different agencies, specifically four consulting services, over $415,000 in just five months. So you deny that Highland's hires people that are buried in, you know, the books just because they're influential. But I would say this, the word education is a huge word. And so sometimes people think, well, they're not a teacher. They think everything else other than that um, is non-contributory to education. Doc said he hires community advocates, and one comes from the NBA, former Sacramento Kings player Harold Presley. From Mystic, Connecticut, number 21, Harold Presley. He doesn't come to school every day, but he's unbelievably impactful with our alumni services, going to meetings with us. What we have here at Highlands is so, it's truly beautiful. He's hired because he has a name, the next king. He's worth his weight in gold to us. Records show Highlands pays Presley just under $100,000 annually in pay and benefits. The school also sponsors a new sports show that he hosts. Welcome to the Highlands Sports Roundtable. Former Sacramento Police Chief Daniel Hahn is also on the payroll, along with California Black Chamber of Commerce CEO Jay King. Both are special projects coordinators and make well over $100,000 annually in pay and benefits. When we reached out, Hahn and King referred us to Highlands. Presley never responded. Highlands also sponsors passion projects of its leadership team. In three years, the school paid $140,000 to a youth basketball organization founded by their assistant deputy director, which as a school for adults, Highlands students are not qualified to participate in. Some staff we spoke with say these are examples of misplaced priorities, saying Highlands has money to pay for big names and non-academic projects, but not to buy basic school items like textbooks. We were told we couldn't order that many because administration was still not totally sold on books for students. 
we don't prioritize education. I help my students, honestly, out of my own pocket. As Highlands Homeless Services Coordinator, Lindsay had a lot of responsibility, but says she never had a budget and had to find money through donations and grants. And yet... And look at how much money you had. We found Highlands reported budgeting over a million dollars for homeless services and documents filed with the state. I don't understand it. A lot more students could have been helped. After all the concerns we voiced today, especially from your employees, why should taxpayers trust you and that your school is providing the services and education that you say you are? I think any taxpayer or not taxpayer, you come to our campus and then you come and look at me and say, what a waste. I'll shut it down right now. Welcome to the first inaugural Doc Smith Legacy Foundation Golf Tournament. Highlands also has a sort of booster organization, a nonprofit called the Doc Smith Legacy Foundation, created in 2020. The Doc Smith Legacy Foundation would like to invite you to the second annual Taste of Highlands. Employees were asked to donate during official staff meetings. It's on recordings obtained by ABC 10. Get this now, if every employee donated $40 a month to the foundation, the backbone is really how our staff supports this foundation. I think they give $100 a month. Was that because you believed in the foundation or was that because you I felt- I was trying to keep my job. It was very clear that like if you were signing that you weren't contributing, you were going to hear about it. There was going to be a consequence, you know. Would you say that you do pressure employees to donate? No pressure, we ask. 65% or 70% of our employees don't donate to it. He says the foundation is a commitment to education and pays for students not qualified to attend Highlands. We, we did over $200,000 in scholarships last year. But a recording of a staff meeting reveals the foundation also helped pay for events during that San Diego trip. Plan some really cool stuff like a black tie dance. The foundation's gonna provide put some really great stuff for you. It's the foundation being the Doc Smith Legacy Foundation that employees are asked to donate to out of their paycheck every month that we are told 100% goes back to students. Everything that is made for the foundation goes directly back to the students. That means staff donations paid for part of their own required work trip. This is a mandatory training. Others believe it's just another way to raise money off students. Raffle prizes, taste of Highlands. Money that ends up in Doc Smith's orbit. I feel that my students were used to make money for a school, and I didn't want to do that. That's next on our investigation, the Wild West of Education.